Hi everybody, I'm Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and today I want to show you how to make the Bonnie Bay Summer Shell. This is made of 100% cotton and I will show you the materials in just a second. This is an intermediate project, especially since it's a fitted garment. And so I encourage you as you go into this project to have a shirt nearby that fits you well in a way that you enjoy and use this to compare with the stitches that you make. In this very important, needless to say, that you follow the gauge or follow a sample that you enjoy wearing as you crochet this along. This is crocheted almost entirely in the round except for a small portion going from the armhole to the body. It's a very short part where you actually crochet rows and the rest is totally in the round and I think you're going to really enjoy that. Almost no, actually there is no sewing involved in this project. So for those of you who don't like sewing, hip hip hooray for that. Yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, um, let's go ahead and I'll show you what you're going to need. For this project, I'm going to be using two types of yarn. Both are cotton. The first is Uneek Cotton by Earth Yarns. And let me show you some stats on this yarn should you want to substitute. There we go. It is 100% mercerized cotton, DK weight 275 yards per, per um, hank and uh, or 100 grams. I'm also going to be using the Euro Baby Kid Cotton and the number of scans on both of these that you're going to need are going to be listed across the bottom there. This is also 100% cotton and also a DK weight each of these balls has 273 yards or 250 meters, each 3.5 ounces or 100 grams. You're also going to be using two different crochet hooks. The gauge hook that we'll be starting with will be the F or 5 or 3.75 millimeters. And the one that we'll be switching to later in the project as we work our way down the sweater is size G or 6 or 4.00 millimeters. And as always, I, I recommend that you have a yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors. And you should also have a nice tape measure available so that you can measure in your work as we go. You're also going to need some stitch markers and make sure that you have some that are of contrasting colors. To start, we are going to be using the smaller crochet hook and we're going to be using the, the color changing uneek cotton. And we're going to start with a slip knot. And just to let you know, I'm going to be making the medium size for the other starting chains for other sizes. Just check the video description or the pattern. Okay, we're going to chain 120 for the medium size. So being very careful not to twist the chain, go ahead and join with a slip stitch to the first chain of the round or of of the first chain. Go ahead and chain two. Work a double crochet in that same space and in each chain all the way around. And just for the record, the chain two that we started with does not count as a double crochet in the stitch count for this round. So go ahead and work one double crochet in each chain all the way around. At the end of the round, Join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet of the round and we're going to chain two, one, two, and the next two rounds, this would be rounds two and three, are worked the same way. We're going to alternate front post double crochet with a back post double crochet all the way around. I'm hoping this is not too dark so that you can't see it. Okay, so front post, get through both loops, double crochet, followed by a back post, double crochet. So go ahead and work that all the way around for the next two rounds. After three rounds, we're just going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round, chain two, again, do not turn. And we're going to work the first four stitches by working a front post, 
double crochet and then a back post double crochet and then a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet. Now working between the last stitch and the next stitch, we're going to work four double crochets in this space right here. This is again not in a stitch but it's in between, it's in the space in between the stitches and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so it's between the last stitch and the next stitch. Okay, so I worked four double crochets and then the next four stitches we're going to work a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet and then a front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet. And then we're going to work four more stitches and again in between that last stitch and the next stitch. So we're going to be adding four new stitches in between these four stitch front post and back post double crochets. So that's one, two, three, and one more. Four. This is again, this is the increase row. So go ahead and work that repeat all the way around. At the end of the fourth row, we just completed the four front post or front post, back post, front post, back post. And don't forget to add four stitches, four double crochets in between the last stitch and the next stitch. And the next stitch is going to be the stitch where we join for the round. Okay, so we're going to join with a slip stitch in that first double crochet of the round. Let's just pause and take a look at what we have here. And you should have doubled your stitch count at this point. Okay, so now it's time for us to turn. Let me go ahead and get back to where I was. There we go. So now we're going to turn. This is going to be the first time that we turn our work in the project as we begin round number five. After joining with the slip stitch and turning, we're going to chain two. And this is the repeat that we're going to work all the way around. We're going to skip the first two stitches, one, two, that's of that four double crochet cluster and working in between the second and the third stitch. We're working in between the space. We're not working in the top, just in between. We're going to work four double crochets. Just like that. And then we're going to work those four front posts. So remember we're going to skip these two stitches. That's part of that four double crochet cluster. And the first one we're going to work is here with the front post double crochet and then a back post double crochet, front post double crochet, and then a back post double crochet. After that we're going to repeat that around. Skip the next two stitches, one, two, and in between we're going to work four and double crochets. One, two, three, and four. And then again, skip the next two. One, two, and then we work the front post and then the back post, front post, and the back post. And we're going to work this all the way around and I think it's going to be a wonderful way to show off these lovely color changes in this yarn. At the end of this round, again, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet of the round. And once again, we're going to turn, chain two, and we're going to repeat this all the way around again front post double crochet, back post double crochet, front post, back post double crochet, 
over those post stitches. And then again, skip two stitches and in between the second and the third stitch of that four double crochet cluster, we're gonna work four double crochets. So go ahead and do this for three more rounds following the same instructions. After working those three rounds with the shell, continue working those rounds until you have 18 rounds with the shells or a total of 21 rounds altogether. At the end of round 21 or the 18th round with the shells, go ahead and join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round and go ahead and fasten off. I'm going to give it a chain and I'm going to leave a generous strand here for hiding once I complete the project. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. Now that we have the collar completed, I've added some stitch markers here and here and let me explain what this is. I have marked out the front side and I've also marked out the back side using these darker colored markers right here. And let me go ahead and explain. So for the medium size, I have placed the markers in between, you see where these two front post double crochets are, I picked the one in between that's recessed. And that is where we're going to join our yarn at one point. And then with for the medium part, we are going to count 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of the sections with the shells. And then place another stitch marker in the center um, on the recessed front post. Actually, it's a back post, depending on the round. And yes, there's another post here, but this just represents the center visually. Okay, so after that, we should have five sections, one, two, three, four, five, that are going to be the sleeve. And you can see this is going to be a nice sleeve. There's going to be some more chains in between here, but we'll get to that in a bit. And now looking at the back side, I've marked with the stitch marker, another section right here. And then we're going to count nine of these shelled sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again, check the pattern for the larger sizes on this particular part. This is crocheting the body or the bodice of this top. And then I placed another stitch marker here. So once we get going here, there will be an a sleeve here, and this of course is upside down, and another sleeve on this side. The front side would actually have more fabric, and the back side just slightly less. Okay, so now I'm going to turn this, and I'm going to start on the back side, and I'm going to join my yarn right here. Now there's one other thing that we need to do. We're going to go ahead and upsize to the next size hook, which would be the G or 6 or 4.00 millimeter crochet hook. And I'm going to get my solid colored yarn ready to roll here, quite literally. And um, let's go ahead and take the stitch marker away. And I'm going to join with a slip stitch. Well, first, let's go ahead and do a slip knot. This is just a, a less bulky way to join our yarn and do a chain and go ahead and work a single crochet in that first stitch. And what we are going to do is we are going to work single crochets in each stitch until we get to the next stitch marker. So go ahead and work those single crochets in each stitch. Okay, I have worked that last single crochet in the stitch marker. I'm gonna go ahead and remove Remove this, and we are going to chain a total of 16 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. 
And now we are going to skip the next five. One, two, three, four, five sets of shells. And I should have said before, this is with the front side facing, and it's whichever side you want to consider the front side facing. Okay, I'm going to work a single crochet in that stitch where the stitch marker is. Okay, just like this. And we now have an armhole of sorts. So let's go ahead and remove this stitch marker. And we are going to single crochet in each stitch until we reach the next stitch marker, which will be way over here. Here we go. Blend it in. So way over here. So go ahead and work those single crochets. After working all the way to the next stitch marker, go ahead and remove that. And we're going to chain 16 again. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And we're going to skip five of the shell sections. One, two, three, four, five. And again, for the medium size. And we're going to join with a slip stitch to the very first stitch of the round. Just like that. And we are not going to turn just yet. So that ends round number one of the body of this. And on the front side, you should have 89 single crochets and you should have 73 on the back side and the 16 chains on each side. Now we're about to begin the waddle stitch. And this is the way we're going to do that. We are going to chain two at the beginning of this round and starting in the next stitch we are going to work a single crochet chain one and a double crochet skip the next two stitches one two single crochet chain one double crochet in that next stitch and we're going to do this all the way until we get to the chain skip two and then work another waddle stitch in that next space. So we're going to work this all the way to the chain. And then once we get to the chains, I will show you how to continue working in the round. So now as we approach the chain section, we're just going to continue skipping two stitches and working the waddle stitch, which is the single crochet chain one, double crochet in each stitch as we go. So or actually skip two, one, two chains and then we will work in that next stitch single crochet chain one double crochet skip two chains and then again work a waddle stitch in that next chain skip two and then work in the next chain just like so and just continue working all the way around, back through the single crochets, and around to the next chain. And I will show you the join at the end of this round. At the end of this round, we're going to skip the last three stitches, one, two, three, and join with a slip stitch to that chain two space. Chain two, and we're going to turn. And this is what we are going to do for a number of rows. I'll show you first the stitches. Okay, we're going to work waddle stitches in that chain one space created in each waddle stitch. Okay, so that would be single crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then we go to the next chain one space and we work single crochet, chain one, double crochet. We're going to work this all the way around. And at the end of the round, we're going to join with a slip stitch to the chain two space right here. And then we will turn at the end of each round. Okay, let's go ahead and let's take a look at how long we should work this particular stitch. 
So we are going to continue working in the round, working the wattle stitches until the measured distance from the very top of the collar down to the last round is approximately 13 inches or according to the pattern um, for the other particular sizes. So for the medium, I'm going to make mine from here and measuring it from the top down until it is approximately 13 inches. And then at that point, I will show you what I have and then I will be switching to a larger hook size at that point. So after crocheting until this is approximately 13 inches, this is what I have. Now this is something very important we are going to do. In order to make the shirt fuller as it comes down around the hips, we are going to change from the G hook or whichever hook you were using to one size up. I'm going to go up to a size H or 8 or 5.00 millimeters and I'm going to just continue crocheting until, let me go ahead and turn this around the right side up, until the measured distance from the top of the collar all the way down is approximately 21 inches. So go ahead and just continue going around with the wattle stitch until you've reached that point or until the measured distance that you desire to go down over the hip area. Okay, now that our top measures from the, the collar on down, Now you also may want to try this on yourself if this is for you and just to make sure that it is within an inch of the length that you want. You're, we're going to be adding one more inch to this and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to start that. I'm going to do this with the right side of the top facing outward and I've already joined that last round from the wattle stitch round and I am still using my size H crochet hook which is the larger crochet hook. Go ahead and chain two so that's one two and what we are going to do is we are going to work double crochets and this is what I recommend. We're going to skip the double crochet and we're going to work two double crochets in the chain one space and then one double crochet in that single crochet and we're going to work that all the way around the top or actually around the bottom of the top. At the end of the round I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the very first double crochet of the round and the next two rounds which are the final rounds of this project I'm going to chain two and we are going to work a front post double crochet followed by a back post double crochet and again this is the ribbing front post double crochet let's make sure we pull it through all the loops there and then followed by a back post double crochet so we're going to work that all the way around at the end of the round, we are going to join with a slip stitch again at the very top of the first double crochet or front post double crochet of the round. And like I said before, go ahead and repeat this. So do this round two times and then you can fasten off and I'll show you that at the end. After working those two rounds, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first stitch of the round and go ahead and give it a chain and a tug and I'm going to clip a generous strand. I like to leave yeah, at least, I don't know, four to six inches, just whatever you think you're going to need to thread into a yarn needle. So let's go ahead and I'll show you just a real quick tutorial on how one way you can hide these loose strands. Okay, so we thread our loose end into that yarn needle and make sure that you are hiding these along the back side of your work. So I'm going to work this down into the stitches 
You just, again, want to do this in a way where it does not show on the front side. Okay, we can do that. And I'm going to run it under a couple of these. And a lot of times I like to, to go back the other direction with this. I mean, you don't have to. You could continue to run this, you know, under the stitches here, but uh, I'm, I'm not real comfortable doing that because I think that little loose strand might show. There we go. Having a hard time getting it through. Um, let's just go ahead and pull that back like that. And I'm going to give it a little tug just so that it's it's nice and um, you know secure in this area. So after we do that, that string is well hidden. So all I need to do now is hide the additional strands and then I'll show you the completed project. I hope you enjoyed making the Bonnie Bay Summer Shell with me today. If you did, please let me know, or if you have questions or any comments, please comment below in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. God bless. Bye-bye.